Welcome back. Okay, we're talking about Koopman operator theory and how we can represent nonlinear systems in a special coordinate system where the dynamics look linear. Uh, this is inherently a data-driven method now, so lots and lots of uh, kind of machine learning and regression techniques are used to approximate this Koopman operator. Uh, and what I want to talk about now is a particularly challenging set of systems that exhibit chaos, transients, intermittent phenomena. Um, and this is also known as, as continuous spectrum dynamical systems. So these are dynamical systems where the Koopman operator doesn't have discrete eigenvalue spectrum, but has a continuum of eigenvalues. And these are much, much harder uh, for data-driven representation. And there's a lot of interesting work going on in this kind of continuous spectrum world right now. OK, so uh, this should be a movie. This is the Lorentz system, and it would be rotating around. And you can see kind of that there's this mixing and folding of dynamics. Uh, the Lorentz system is a pretty simple, one of the simplest dynamical systems that gives rise to chaos. And if you took the Fourier transform of a signal, of a measurement signal of, of Lorentz for long enough, you would find that you get this continuous power spectrum. OK, so it's really hard to represent. So one thing I'll tell you about very briefly is a method we developed a while back called the Henkel Alternative View of Koopman. Uh, this is work with Bing, Josh, Erica, and Nathan. And this was essentially after we developed our sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics method, we started thinking, if I only had limited measurements of this chaotic system, if I only had measurements of x, this first variable, and maybe it's time derivative, could I build uh, dynamical system model that describes this behavior. And at the time, we had no idea that this was going to come back to Koopman theory. So this is kind of an aside that came back to Koopman. <clears throat> and so what we did was we assumed we had measurements of x. We built some delay coordinates. So we would build a Hankel matrix and take the singular value decomposition and get these eigen delay coordinates. So from x, we can get this embedding that's diffeomorphic to this original attractor uh, under some conditions. And then we would do a basic DMD regression model or a Cindy regression model of the dynamics in these coordinates. And we found that you actually get a very, very linear dynamical structure, even for strongly chaotic systems, in these delay coordinates. Um, and essentially, what we realized was that these time delay coordinates, in some sense, are very good measurements for Koopman analysis. So measuring time-delayed histories of my state measurement embeds me in a coordinate system where my dynamics look approximately linear. And if I'm embedded in a coordinate system where my dynamics look linear, then I have found a Koopman representation. And you can use it in this case for prediction. So there's this kind of interesting forcing signature because this is a chaotic system. So in the white trajectory, the system really is completely linear. It's a Koopman linear system. But every once in a while, there's this kind of essential nonlinearity that kicks in and tells you you're about to switch lobes in the Lorentz. And then you go back to this white trajectory where you're linear. Uh, long story short, for this chaotic intermittent system, so when I say intermittent, it intermittently switches, it turns out that time delay coordinates give you an extremely effective coordinate system or embedding where Koopman linear analysis works. Okay, so we were really surprised and pleased uh, that this kind of time delay coordinate system works so well for Koopman. We gave it this acronym HAVOC. It sounds kind of cool. Uh, but basically, it's just time delay coordinates and then do DMD, and you get uh, good representations of these chaotic systems. Okay, in the, in the time since then, we've been working with Bethany Lush. So um, Bethany works with Nathan and myself, and we've been thinking about these continuous spectrum dynamical systems. So it's frustrated me for a long time that you know, we, we're developing all of this Koopman operator theory. We're applying it to full turbulence. We're applying it to neuroscience and uh, you know, climate, all of these big nonlinear systems where we don't know the answer. Okay? And I think somehow maybe it's easier to apply this to big systems where we don't know the answer. It's frustrated me for a while that we didn't know what Koopman says about the pendulum. I couldn't, for the life of me, write down the eigenfunctions of the pendulum in Koopman analysis and get a, a nice linear representation of this pendulum. And I remember positing this to my colleagues a number of years ago at a workshop. Maybe we should start working on this simpler system and try to understand this, where we almost know everything about the pendulum. Because I think 
you know, we, we need to understand this before we go to really, really complicated systems. And Bethany's made some excellent progress understanding uh, how Koopman applies to simple, simple systems like the pendulum. And it all comes down to this idea of a continuous spectrum in dynamical systems. So what does a continuous spectrum mean? Well, if I start this pendulum in the down position and I give it a tiny kick, there's a natural frequency. It's going to give me pure sines and cosines at that natural frequency because it really is very linear for small energy. But as I increase the energy, the period gets longer and longer and longer, right? This thing gets slower and slower. And eventually, if I go almost to the top, the period draws out and protracts to, to infinity. Okay, so this period continuously deforms. The natural frequency of this continuously deforms as I increase energy. And so there's no discrete eigenvalues of the system. There's a whole continuum of eigenvalues of my Koopman system. Uh, these are phase portraits in theta, theta dot. Uh, and this is, you know, the continuum of eigenvalues from the natural frequency all the way to zero as the period elongates to infinity. Okay, so this continuous spectrum system, even though it's exceedingly simple and we think we know everything about the, pe the pendulum, it's actually quite hard to represent Koopman eigenfunctions and, and, and to represent this pendulum in the Koopman world. So that's what Bethany has been uh, developing and we're really happy because we essentially learned a lot. First of all, we learned things we didn't know we didn't know and then Bethany figured out solutions to the representation problem. And so this is all based on this kind of Koopman autoencoder network, and we're not the only ones developing it. Lots of people are developing these autoencoder networks to represent Koopman. So you take your data, you lift it to some nonlinear representation, and you find uh, a few latent variables or intrinsic coordinates given by this, uh, this, uh, this phi of x function. And you make sure that those functions can be inverted to give you your state back. That's what a normal autoencoder does kind of a nonlinear version of principal components analysis. But what the Koopman autoencoder does is it essentially adds in this little linear time stepper in the middle to guarantee that I can advance y at time k to the next time step using a linear map k. So lots of us are doing this, building these Koopman autoencoders to find these eigenfunctions that advance linearly in time. This is a really cool approach to the eigenfunction representation problem. But what Bethany realized is that lots of dynamical systems of interest don't have a discrete eigenvalue spectrum. So there's no, you know, there's no k-matrix with just a, a plus or minus i omega eigenvalues that will represent the pendulum. Because there's a whole continuum of eigenvalues for that problem. And in traditional uh, harmonic or, or perturbation analysis, you'd need all of these harmonics of that natural frequency to approximate that continuous spectrum. And so we actually postulate that a lot of these Koopman autoencoders that people are applying to continuous spectrum systems, they need a pretty big middle layer to approximate all of these harmonics, okay? And so what Bethany is doing instead is she builds this auxiliary side network, which essentially learns the continuous parameter value omega that then parameterizes that plus or minus i omega. So we still have a structure with two eigenfunctions, complex conjugate eigenfunctions, plus and minus. We still have this Jordan block, <coughs> excuse me, this Jordan block of our k operator, plus or minus i omega eigenvalues. But now we have this auxiliary side network, which essentially, given the, the energy of the system, the energy level of the system, it continuously varies the actual frequency. So we hard code that we still want two variables, two eigenfunctions. Uh, we want them to be complex conjugates, so we build that structure into this k-matrix. But Bethany has this auxiliary side network which essentially parameterizes those eigenvalues uh, with this parameter omega. And so it's learning the continuous spectrum dependence on the state x, and it's learning this eigenfunction structure. And so this, this extra um, constraint and structure in the system allows us to learn these much more parsimonious representations with kind of these minimal uh, variables in the middle that are now parameterized by our auxiliary network. And so she's applied this to the, uh, the pendulum problem, and she's essentially found these eigenfunctions in phase space that when you map into these coordinates, you get perfect sines and cosines, perfect linear behavior. Um, at different frequencies for different amplitudes. So different, you know, the farther you go out in radius, you still have sines and cosines, but now the frequency changes. 
And after talking to Igor Mezich, he pointed out that you could actually map these into magnitude and phase coordinates. And there's this really beautiful connection to these action angle coordinates from classical mechanics uh, that you can read about in his archive paper from 2017. So that was kind of a fun connection we made. Um, you know, we showed this to Igor and he pointed out if we map it in this coordinate system, we basically get action angle coordinates uh, for this pendulum, which is really, really nice and satisfying because that connects us back to this kind of 100 years of, uh, or more than 100 years of classical mechanics. Uh, and again, it all relies on this auxiliary network of parametrizing this, or else we wouldn't have been able to get two eigenfunctions. We would have had all of these harmonics, plus or minus two i omega, plus or minus three i omega, four, you know, all of those harmonics would have been necessary here. Okay, so she's also applied this to more rich systems like the flow past a cylinder, which also has this continuous deformation of my eigenvalues as I increase or decrease the energy level of the system. So she finds these eigenfunctions here that map me into a linear coordinate system. Um, so it's nice, this method scales because it is relying on the power and flexibility of this, this deep learning architecture. Okay, so those are just a couple of the many approaches people are starting to play with for uh, continuous spectrum dynamical systems. So it turns out, maybe, maybe other people knew this, but I didn't appreciate even two years ago how ubiquitous the continuous spectrum is in dynamical systems. Most of the systems of interest to me that I'm interested in have a continuous spectrum. They don't just have discrete eigenvalues. They have this continuous deformation of the eigenvalues over you know, in energy or control input. And so I think this is only going to become more and more important to start thinking of how our Koopman representation applies to these continuous spectrum systems. And currently, I think two of the leading methods are time delay coordinates. So lots of us are now looking at the mathematical theory and the applied um, use of delay coordinates for Koopman representations of these chaotic systems. And then the other broad category for representing these nasty uh, kind of Koopman systems are deep networks, deep neural networks, autoencoders, parametrized autoencoders. Uh, it's a hard representation problem and deep learning is tailor-made for hard representation problems if you have enough data, okay? So hopefully these keep developing and keep emerging uh, to solve these more and more realistic continuous spectrum problems. Okay, thank you.